Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth, I'm a marine biologist and today I'm going to be talking about five skills that you will learn if you become a marine biologist. I'm doing a series all about the nitty gritty details of being a marine biologist. I'm talking about topics that you'll learn, the skills that you need, how competitive it is, what qualifications you need, what is the money that you get paid. All of the things that you need to know to have a bit more of an idea of what you do as a marine biologist and if that's the sort of thing that you want to do. Make sure to subscribe to not miss out on those upcoming videos. But in today's video I'll be talking about these five skills that you'll probably learn if you become a marine biologist and that I think are quite cool marine biology things to do. Number one, you will learn about doing boat work. So this is when you will go on a boat and you'll go out and do a lot of different stuff. Now depending on what type of marine biology you get into, you might learn a load of different boat skills. I'm going to be mainly talking about skills on a smaller vessel that will go out and do lots of like ecology sampling of things like sea life. For example, in my undergraduate, we went out and we did things like trawling, so going through the water with a net to catch some some fish species and then sampling them, learning out, learning how to identify them, to record them and then putting them back in the sea. In this you'll learn about things like what order you do them in because some creatures aren't very happy being out of the water compared to others. So doing all of that kind of practical stuff that you work through and these are skills that you probably would do if you were hired by a company or an ecological consultancy or something like that to go out and check to learn about fish stocks, how are the fish stocks doing, how do we record that, are things being overfished, is some sort of human environmental impact that has been in the area affecting different creatures and it's these kind of techniques that you would use to go and study and sample things like that. You'll also do things like grabs which is send a big old claw out down to the bottom of the sea to take a chunk and pull back up and then you take all that mud and that those sea creatures and that sample back to the lab and then spend many 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 months looking through all the different creatures that are on that. That shows things again like environmental things you can look at, our man-made things like um, offshore oil stuff or offshore renewable stuff impacting the kind of environment in any way. There are a lot of jobs in marine biology that rely on learning that kind of skill. But there are also bigger boats that go further afield. You might have to learn how to use uh, remote underwater vehicles, so driving like little basically remote controlled cars underwater to go and get video samples or go and actually collect different stuff. There's like these ROVs now that go down and they've got all their stuff that they can go and actually like robot away and pick up some samples of different things. That could be used for discovering new species like taxonomy or just getting to areas that are typically more difficult to get to and doing sampling in a less invasive way. Other boat skills would include taking more physical and chemical samples of water, so sending down into the depths, sometimes pretty deep, um, and to learn about the chemistry and the temperature and all of those informations about the water. Sometimes you might not even need to do, put anything in the water at all. You might be going out on a boat to sample sea life like marine mammals or seabirds and learning how to count them, how to do timed surveys, how to study the distance and work out what creature has just breached and done this amazing whale move. I was being super excited to see it, but working out how many whales or dolphins are there, what, what creature it was, looking at how far away it is, how to do all that kind of stuff, which is really awesome. Same with things like birds. If you are interested in doing that kind of stuff, I have a video about how you can do it um, just from the beaches and sea cliffs and things like that for organizations like marine life which is just really cool and they do like annual watches every year where everyone watches the coast around the country in the uk and maybe even further um on a certain weekend or week and then all that data gets pulled together for some really cool studies so go check that out on the boat front skill number two is actually how to survive at sea a lot of the time if you're going out on boats you need a kind of I don't know what actually it's called, I need to find out, like a sea survival certificate. Um, and this was a day that I did during my undergraduate where we all went to the pool and we learned sea survival, learned how to make sure that we had life jackets on us, what the protocol for that was, how if we were in a life raft, like one of those life rafts that pops up, we all had to be out of the water and be able to get into the life raft um, and all huddle in. How if you're in the sea and you do unfortunately fall in, 
and you hopefully got your life jacket on, what is the best positions to hold, the best things to do, the best way to call for help, and all of that kind of stuff. So that's a really useful skill, especially if you're a marine biologist and you're gonna be going out and doing boat work, but just if you're around water anyway, it's really cool. And then as you go through a marine biology career, there's definitely more stages to that that you might be able to need, especially if you're going off in the polar regions or on big ships across the Atlantic or on oil rigs and things like this, will require more training to that, which is, you know, all for that because, again, a part of being a marine biologist, not always, but in some roles, you are going into these more dangerous environments um, that it's great that that kind of requires that qualification and that safety to be able to go and do that stuff. Now, on this note, I will say that I have made a video advocating for that, that if you are a marine biologist, you do not have to learn how to dive or how to snorkel. You, you, you don't have to. You can go and be a marine biologist and spend your time in our lab. You can spend your time looking at data. You can spend your time doing rock pooling instead. There's a whole range of things that you can get into with marine biology, whether that's just you being comfortable and not wanting to go and dive, or it's an accessibility thing. There are plenty of spaces in marine biology for people to go and do. I actually went off and did diving, but I did that separate to my course. And again, a lot of the time you won't need to learn to dive because like learning how to do the sea survival training, doing professional diving as a marine biologist requires a really high level of dive qualification that takes years to get and you have to dive for a certain amount of time. You have to be really experienced because if you're getting paid to do it, it's a very dangerous thing to do. And so they want people with the highest level of qualification to do that. But what might come up more often, and I found really fun, is that actually during my undergraduate, part of it was learning how to snorkel and having like tests on making sure that your snorkel skills were up to scratch because then we went off and jetted off to the amazing Puerto Rico and got to do some amazing snorkeling there. So with that, we had to learn how to do things like duck dive. It's basically just diving straight down. And we were learning that because we'd have to go off and dive down um, with weighted kind of belts on and put like a, a transect down on the sea floor around surrounded by these incredible corals and stay down there with waterproof paper and a clipboard underwater and like actually sample it and then come back up. Sometimes it was lucky, shallow enough that you could like look from the top and didn't have to keep diving down. But you had to actually like keep diving and like writing and sketching and drawing. It was such a weird skill to have, the skill to know that you can like dive down underwater, do stuff under the water and like write and draw and record and do science on this like waterproof paper and clipboard and pencil it was so awesome. And the fact that like in a very cold Wales in a September, we, which you know, the sea is not super cold in September, um, having to like go and make sure that everyone could like dive down far enough and pick up a weight and come back up. It felt like the games you used to play in the swimming pool as a kid, but like on like the extreme level and not get distracted by all the awesome sea life that was around, which is usually what happens with me. On that note, the fourth skill that I'm gonna say is how to sample quickly. Now I'm gonna say this and I'm doing this deliberately because I want all the biologists and zoologists to scream at me in the comments. Um, I kind of half apologize, but I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> As a marine biologist in particular, you need to learn how to sample quickly. And I'm gonna say that because of the tide. So as someone who has done a lot of science on the intertidal zone, where the tide goes out and comes back in, you have a very, very limited amount of time to do what you need to do in that environment. You maybe might get four hours if you're lucky and depending at the top of the shore. I've been in spots where at the bottom of the shore where you want to study and sample that, you've maybe got 20 minutes, half an hour to be down there to do your stuff and to get back up. And so as a marine biologist, a lot of the time you are taught how to do those sampling techniques and absolutely go for it. It's like all hands on deck, absolutely run for it. So that is a weird skill that as a marine biologist you will learn. It is knowing the tide times, reading the tide times, <laughs> knowing what you can get done in the tide times and just absolutely going for it. And like, I find that really fun <laughs> and also very tiring by the time you get to like the end of the sample season. It's very knackering. Um, and so, sorry, biologists and zoologists, let me know when you have to do field work really fast. Um, I'm sure there are examples of it. I'm sure there's like a, a, a zoologist there being like, 
wait until you sample lions. Yeah, we're just lay lazing around all day because like there's no risk with stuff like lions. I'm just starting drama on the internet. And skill number five is one that you probably might have expected. It's to, how to do stuff like aquarium in. Okay, that's not what it's called, but learning about how to keep stuff in aquarium, animal welfare, what a fish looks like when it's happy, what a fish looks like when it's not in a happy environment, learning about diseases and just um, space it needs and all of those kind of things, learning how to keep the water temperature correct and the chemicals in the water correct and keeping the diseases out and cross-contamination of things. Um, how to set up like lab lights to be correct or not correct and all of these different things that you might need to know as as a marine biologist i'd say it's very basic at an early level and if you go into something that requires aquarium keeping um like working in an aquarium or working in aquaculture then those skills are not as useful but it's something that as soon as you're in that zone you just learn all of it you just learn how to fix tanks and fix pipes and and having to be on it with like feeding creatures every day obviously making sure they're okay doing all these checks it's a really difficult job being anything to do with keeping animals and keeping animals in an aquarium um, because you just want to make the welfare of those creatures as high as possible. So learning those skills is really important and really invaluable to being able to do the science that you need to do with creatures in aquariums and also just, you know, looking after them as best you can. Also, a lot of the time, you might have to learn the weird tricks about how to stop stuff escaping. And I'm looking at you, crabs. I'm looking at you. As an undergraduate, there's lots of projects going on. Everyone gets to do a dissertation and lots of people kept crabs and they are like escape ninja artists so if anyone actually knows how to stop crabs escaping and just like trying to run you like walk into the lab and there just be a crab running around you're like oh, where have you come from i'm sure put it in the comments i'm sure people that are using crabs and experiments around the world want to, to just know how do we stop the crabs escaping i don't think it's possible that might have to go on a, on a video about skills that marine biologists, that no marine biologist has ever learned. Thank you all for watching this video. I really enjoyed it. There are gonna be a couple more of these skill videos here. This is just five skills that I thought were like the main marine biology ones, but there are tons of like weird skills or practical skills or just more awesome skills that I learned being a marine biologist that I would love to share with you all. And I will also be carrying on the series talking about things like qualifications, finances, how to get a job, all of that. So make sure to subscribe. And if you really, really want to support me, then head over to my Patreon, because not only will you access exclusive content, you will also get to make a little sea creature that goes at the end of the video. Then you can join our little sea sea creature, like, like online rock pool page. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> I will see everyone next week. Bye everyone.